Hello and welcome back to Cartoony Character Creation. My name is Terry Tripp. In our previous videos, we've talked about how to draw the face and how to draw the facial features, such as the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, eyebrows. And in another previous video, we've practiced drawing the body, different body shapes of characters, of cartoony characters. So in this fourth and final week here, we're going to practice putting all those together to draw a complete character, to create a cartoony um, character of your own. So let's go ahead and practice doing that right now. Now, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of lightly sketch a head. Now, this head is going to be shaped almost kind of like an ups a triangle almost like a triangle but definitely not completely there's gonna be curves and as you see here I'm practicing sketching very very loosely these are very loose lines my pencil is barely touching the paper I have my eraser with me so I can go back and any lines that I really don't want I can just kind of gently erase those. Okay, from there, I think that's going to be a fun shape for the head. And then I'm going to go ahead and sketch out the body. So maybe there'll be a neck right here. And then for the body, we'll have the chest kind of come out. This will be this kind of like the spine we'll Have the chest come out and then come in. To give the character a little bit more of a dramatic pose. So let's go ahead and clean up that shape a little bit. Another thing to think about as you are drawing is your back posture. Are you slouching over or is your back still straight? So if you're drawing for a, large, a long amount of time and you have poor back posture, it's, it's going to hurt. It's going to be uncomfortable. And if you're uncomfortable, you're not going to enjoy drawing. So you definitely need to be aware, at least be aware of your back posture. So from there, let's go ahead. This is going to be a female character. So let's kind of draw out a dress. And then we can go ahead and put in the arm. Now there will be an arm right here. We'll have it. Maybe come out about right there. Now with your guidelines, as you see here, we do sometimes have to go back and clean them up just so there's not confusion. We want loose lines, but when it starts to get a little bit too messy, we don't, we don't want confusion. Let's go ahead and add the arm that's going to be uh, behind the uh, chest and stomach area here. So it would probably come down about right here. Okay, it's coming out a little bit more in this direction, so it'll be slightly shorter. And then from there, we can maybe go in and put some hair. Maybe for this character, we might want bangs. And then maybe, well, let's go ahead and erase this guideline. We don't need that line anymore. And then we'll have hair that comes down about right here. So don't cheat your guidelines. Don't think, well, I know that there's guidelines there. Why do I have to draw them? You really don't want to do that because it's, it's, it's a bad habit to get in 
because eventually you are going to need those guidelines and it helps uh, create accuracy within your characters. I've seen some of the most talented professional Disney animators draw Mickey Mouse and even though they've drawn Mickey Mouse thousands and thousands of times they still put in the construction lines. So I always think hey if I have to do it I'm definitely going to do it. And it helps train your mind too to think about the lines behind your character. So what we mean by that, and I'll just go ahead and kind of demonstrate. When you're thinking about um, a shape, so you're thinking about this shape right here, a square, okay? You don't want to think of it as just a square. You want to think of it as a three-dimensional shape, okay? So you want to be able to start to see things in in three dimensions, 3D, okay? So the construction lines help help with that a little bit. So let's go ahead and move back on to our character here. Now we can think of some eyes. There's so many different ways we can draw eyes here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in some ears. She's gonna have ears that kind of stick out like that. And then for the eyes, let's see, maybe this is the, uh, the uh, construction line, so I can give her little tiny eyes, you know, give her eyes spaced out apart, give her close eyes. So, so many, so many different options here of how we want to draw our character, okay? So I'm just going to give her some kind of in the middle eyes. Let's see, so many different types of noses we can give our character. Okay, so you, you know, you get to decide what type of nose uh, she should have. A really easy way to draw a nose is just have it just kind of come up like that. <laughs> that's, that's a very simple way, just kind of like a little... Um, greater or lesser than symbol. And then we'll draw her lips. Now for her lips, I'm going to kind of make them a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back and erase my construction lines, my guidelines. I don't need those right now. I'm going to change her face a little bit just to give her a little bit more of a chin. And then when drawing female characters, a really easy way to make them look more feminine is just to draw in some eyelashes. A really, really simple way. And then give them kind of a curly, more curvy, I'm sorry, more curvy eyebrows. And there's, there's our character. She's starting to kind of come out here a little bit. Some people like to kind of give rosy cheeks too. That's an option. You can do that. Now the bangs, there's lots of different ways. Some people like just to kind of draw lines going down like that for the bangs. You can do that. You can kind of just really start to space out the bangs and give them a little bit more detail and you can go through and start to erase some of these um, construction lines or the guidelines so that's an option as well we'll just go ahead and do that option And then for the hair, we can just very simply just kind of put in some flowy lines. 
you can even add a little bit of those lines here as well. Now if you really want to, you can go back and draw some type of bow in her hair. Oops. Oops. Maybe you kind of want to do something like that. Um, kind of mini mouse, you know, she has a bow in her hair. That's an option. Now let's go ahead and start to work on our clothing. Maybe she's going to be having, maybe she'll have a shirt. So we'll add a little bit more detail there. Maybe her shirt will be tucked in to her dress. In her dress, we can kind of give it some flow. If you want to, you can go ahead and draw some little feet coming out of it. Okay. Or you can just have it where the dress hangs straight to the ground. So you definitely have those options. And of course, you can go through if you want to add some kind of little uh, lace to make it look a little bit more feminine, you can definitely do that as well. Or even around this area, you can do that. Okay. So it just, it really adds, adds to the character and you can go back and add all those little details. For her hands, we're just gonna keep them, oops, keep them very simple. This is a cartoon, so we're not gonna even draw on the fingers. We're just gonna kind of put the four fingers together and then draw the thumb, because that's what we really, really notice with, with characters. So there she is, and there's our character. I'm going to kind of make some edits now, maybe her lips, make them just a little bit, a little bit smaller. And re-examine everything. Maybe her eyebrows can just be a little bit, a little bit longer. I want to add in, you know, I can add in just a little bit more detail there. And as I step back, I, I kind of like her character. She's a very feminine, um, kind of fun, classy, uh, cartoony character. Now you can eat very, very easily change this character just by maybe if you want to make her more of an animal, uh, maybe give her cat ears. Um, you can very easily change her to make her look like a mouse. If you're doing cartoony animal characters, you can make those changes very, very easily. Um, but for this sake, we'll just kind of make her like a simple, simple human. So the next step. We're going to actually finish this character, so I'm going to go to my black ink pen. So this is my black ink pen I like to use. Now I created a new layer, but we, what you can do is just ink over the top of this drawing. And then when you're done, you can just take your eraser and just kind of very lightly erase away so it's not as... Um, you don't really see the blue lines, or you can even do that right now, but you don't want to erase it completely because then you won't be able to see your original lines that you worked so hard to create. So the inking process, as I always say, is the process that kind of takes some time. So you really want to make sure you have a steady hand. Make sure <clears throat> you're very relaxed. This is a good time to maybe listen to some music. A lot of artists have playlists that they create so that's just specifically for making art. The music that you listen to when you're making art should be something that relaxes you though. 
probably shouldn't be the same music you like to work out to or run to. I always like to leave a little area to show that light is reflecting off of the pupils. Now before, I talked about having very, very loose lines. You could have messy lines. This is where you want to have clean lines. So this is where you really want to have a very, very steady hand. And I'm examining things here, and I found something that I don't completely like. So I'm going to change it. There we go. And then I'm going to add maybe a little bit more design to her dress. Ooh, we have a little design at the bottom to make it a little bit more elaborate. Nothing super complicated, but just something. So I'm going to stop there and then erase the blue pencil lines underneath to step back and for a moment examine my character. There's a few things I noticed that I can maybe improve upon. Now here is a technique that we're going to use that helps your cartoony characters even look that much more cartoony. And what we can do is all the outlining lines, if we go back over those, and I'll even do it on a new layer to show you, if we go over those, we can make them thicker. 
Now note here, we're not gonna do this with all the lines, don't do that, but just the outlining lines of your character. So it's like you're outlining your character with thicker lines, just the outline. I remember being younger and I tried this technique once with all the lines and it just looked horrible. <laughs> Oops. Change my angle. In arts, when we're doing inking, a lot of people call it line with variety. And that means in your lines, you have a variety in the width or the thickness of the lines. You don't want all lines to be exactly the same. Some lines are gonna be thin and some lines are gonna be thick. So when we step back and we look at our character, it kind of adds a more cartoony feel by outlining. Now I'll show you it without. This is it without. This is it with. Okay. Now it also depends on the style. Some people like the thinner line style. Some people like the thicker line style. So and then to add some line shape variety I'm going to demonstrate here how it can look like with more variety. So I'm going to Take this line and have this one go from thin to thick. So you can see this line begins thin and then it gets thick here. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I have this line go from thin and then it becomes thick towards the bottom. So the weight of the line is actually going to build up at the bottom. So those are some ways where just even without color, you can add a lot to your artwork just by changing up some of the lines and the, and the width of the lines. So let's go ahead and move on and we're going to begin to color our character here, our female character. Now, when you color, you can use color pencils, you can use markers, it's up to you. And now I'm, I'm going to be coloring digitally. That way I don't bore you with you having to watch me fill in all of the shapes. So mine will be a lot quicker and faster than yours, and that's okay. So I feel like her skin, it would be fun if we kind of make it like a, a pale pink color, and that's a little bit too pink. So we even go lighter. Okay, let's move on to her hair. Maybe her hair will be a brunette. Um, color, more of a brown. So we're going to experiment around and see. Not super happy with that one. And for you, this might be you trying color pencils on your paper, on a piece of scratch paper, and seeing which color you actually like. And it's really good to do that before you actually color an area. Try it out. You know, try out that color on a piece of scratch paper and see if see if it works or not. It might or it might not. Now for her dress, let's do a um, maybe we can go a pink. Let's let's try pink. It might not work. Let's see. Mm, yeah, I, I think that works. I think pink 
will work in this setting. Maybe we can do something wild like pink and yellow. Let's maybe choose a different type of yellow. Mm, too orange. What if we did a pink and green? That's very unique. <laughs> And like I said, this is this could be on your part. This could be this could look like you trying out colors on your um, on your scratch paper. Okay, we kind of have a yellow color. I like that. I think that's kind of fun. It's different, and uh, and that's kind of fun. It's fun to do different sometimes. And we'll kind of keep the lace kind of like a white color. So we're gonna go in and add detail to all of these. When you're coloring with your color pencils, just a tip, I mean you can you can make some wonderful artwork with color pencils. You you don't want to dig through your paper. You don't want to press so hard that you literally damage your paper, but you also really want to fill in the area. Fill in that area with your um, with your color pencil, so really master those. Oops. <laughs> Maybe more of a bit more rosy pink for the lips. And we'll make her bow match the bottom, or match her dress. So there's our character. Very, very simple. Um, very simple shading, I mean, um, coloring. But then we can go back and we can even do some more. We can really alter things and add in some value and add in some shading. So I'm going to duplicate this layer just so we have a backup, just in case we mess it up at all. And this is this is called um, cell shading. So this is a way to shade things um, to add in a little bit more detail. So maybe in the sides of her face, right here, maybe I want to go just a little bit darker. So I'm going to take, oops, let me close this. I'm going to take the original color of the skin. And then I'm going to go just a tad darker and fill in that area. Okay. So what that does is it adds um, a little a little bit more um, to the depth of the drawing. So I can do the same thing right here. Maybe in our bangs, all right here. It's going to be a little bit darker. And on this side of the face as well, maybe, oops, <laughs> maybe all right here. Maybe that'll be darker as well. So we can we can do little um, little um, things like that to make um, certain things a little bit darker. Same thing here. We're going to bring down the hair and make this. Oops. Let's see. Make that part of the hair just a little bit darker. Sometimes this might not even be that noticeable. Maybe in the dress. Let's go ahead and grab that color. We will select the 
this area, color a little bit darker, kind of add it. And now there, I might have gone a little bit too dark. So maybe we'll find a nice middle area. There we go. And maybe we can do that with the bottom part of the arm as well. A little bit of the back. It's a little bit darker. Like that. Now, when we think about this, you might be thinking, well, how can I do that with color pencils? Well, color pencils, the tip uh, about using color pencils is to never think about using one color alone. Take two colors or three colors and use them on top of each other. And after you use them on top of each other, take that white color pencil and use that to go over those pencils and it can help to blend them together. So you want to think of the white color pencil as a blending tool. Okay, a tool to help blend them together. Now I'm just going to go back and put in some highlights. Maybe certain areas here where the light's just kind of reflecting. We can add here and there, just kind of think little areas where the light would be kind of just reflecting just slightly. And these are things that people really don't notice that much when they um, when they look at artwork, but but it's there. Okay. So we don't want her floating in space right now. She's just kind of floating in space. So we can ground our characters very, very easily. And we can do that just by, well, there's a couple ways we can do it. One way we can do it is just to kind of draw a very simple line and it doesn't even have to be a straight line as you can see and what that does is it makes our makes it look like our character is standing on something so that's a really easy way to do it and then what i could do is even add in some color so if we take maybe some green and then i'm just going to kind of color that And then maybe throw down some shadow. Oops, let's go a little a lot lighter. Let's move this behind. And we'll make this a lot darker let's see we'll, we'll stop we'll, we'll do this in layers <laughs> okay um, then I want to erase this okay and then what I can do is get some a darker green and we'll just throw down A little bit of a darker green there. Play around with the opacity. And there's our character. So that's the first, um, first part of the lesson today is creating our own character from scratch. Sketching out some shapes, okay? Uh, adding the facial features. Um, coloring it, going, doing the line work, all of that. And we have our finished character from scratch. For the next part of this lesson, what I want you guys to do is do some independent practice. So what I'm showing you now are some other examples of characters that you can draw just starting off 
sketching them out very, very loosely and then going back and adding the inking and then the coloring and maybe even the shading as well. So as you watch through these examples, you can practice these examples or your assignment is to actually create your own character, your very own unique character from scratch with your own shapes, uh, your own facial features, own clothing, own hair, and own color. You, you get to decide all of those reasons. Now, before you decide those reasons, come up with a story. Come up with a reason why your character looks like that. Or come up with some uh, characteristics that are based upon your character's um, characteristics. So what does your cartoony character do? How does he or she talk? Is it an animal? Is it a human? Does this character live on Earth, a different planet, outer space, the sewers? All of those, you know, all of those um, details you need to come up with um, before you actually start to create your character. Is it part animal? Is it part alien? Um, is it a robot? All those things you get to come up with. So when we create uh, characters, especially cartoony characters, it is truly an opportunity for you to be very, very, very creative. So it's great to have skill and it's great to be able to copy things. Um, and that's a great way to practice is by drawing other people's characters, but to really practice being a creative person. This is a good opportunity for you to practice creating something that has not existed before by anyone else, which is your very own cartoony character, which is the whole purpose of this class, cartoony character creation to create your very own character. So hopefully you had fun in the last um, four weeks of this class. It's been a pleasure to teach it. I want to encourage you all to continue to be sketching, continue to be creating. Keep your sketchbook with you at all times. Whenever you go somewhere, grab your sketchbook. Uh, make sure you have a pencil or a pen and an eraser and just go somewhere. Whenever you're in those times of life where you're just waiting and waiting. Don't let waiting time be wasted time. Pull out that sketchbook and start to create um, and just start to doodle, start to draw. You don't have to have anything set in mind. Just maybe draw a circle, draw a rectangle, draw a triangle and turn it into a person, turn it into a creature, turn it into an animal and create something. And before you know it, your whole entire sketchbook will be full of these creative drawings, all of this practice, and you can create your own land, you can create your own worlds full of many, many, many different stories. I wanna highly, highly encourage you to do that. What is also neat about your sketchbook is you will see yourself improve over time, and it does take time, it takes a lot of time, but you'll see yourself get better and better and better. So, once again, my name's Terry Tripp, and thank you very much for taking this course.